Staging chillers on return water temperature in a variable primary pumping system does not work. This idea has been spinning around in my head for a few years now and I've just not been too sure what to do about it because it is such a controversial subject. In this video I am going to try and convince you that when we transitioned from three port control valves in the field, constant volume pumping, to two port control valves in the field, variable primary pumping, that the chiller staging control strategy was not transferable. Let's get straight into this because I can see that a lot of you are shaking your heads now thinking, Bryce, this time you have gone too far. And like, I agree, because I'm feeling pretty nervous right now too. Like we are pushing the boundaries here of what we've been doing for a long time. So let's start with when we had three port control valves and constant volume systems. So on a design day, 35 degrees Celsius here in Australia, all the three port valves on all the air handling units would have been fully open. Both chillers running at design speed, pumps at design volume, chillers at full capacity. At that point in time, the chillers were pushing 6 degrees Celsius out to the field and the return was coming back at 12 degrees Celsius. Typical full load design day. Now, as the load started to decrease in the field and those three port valves started to close off from 100% down to say 50%, a lot of 6 degrees Celsius water went through their bypass of the three port valves, actually at the coil, and six degrees Celsius started mixing in with the return, leaving the coil. So back at the chillers, the return water temperature started to reduce 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, as more of the six degrees Celsius was getting mixed into the return and coming back. And at some point, with this reducing return temperature, we stage each other off. That makes complete sense. In my mind, that works. Then we transition to two port control valves in the field and variable primary pumping with variable speed drives. So what happens here, and this is, this is the key part of this whole thing, when you reduce, when you close a two port valve off on an air handling from 100% down to 50%, what happens is the volume of water slows down through the coil. Because the water goes slower through the coil, there's more time for the air to pick up more coolth into the supply air. So what actually happens is that the leaving temperature on a two port valve, when it starts to close off, that temperature increases from 12 to 13 to 14. So in a three port system, when the valves are closing off, the temperature reduces and we stage down. With two port valves, when they close off, the temperature coming out of the coil, it's actually increasing. It's the opposite to what the three ports did. Now, I remember first when a mechanical engineer explained this to me, that as the two ports close and the flow of the coil reduces, the temperature, the return temperature increases. Like that completely blew my mind. I was sitting there and thinking, I was just staring into space, like the whole day. I was just thinking, but uh, that makes no sense. We're staging chillers off on return water temperature, or we have been for a long time, and that just does not stack up to me. It's the opposite. It doesn't actually work. And I, you know that you know when you're a teenager and you're sitting in your lounge with your parents watching TV on a Sunday afternoon, and you're thinking, "Did my girlfriend cheat on me this weekend?" That feeling, like I had that feeling. I was just sitting there thinking, "Like this, how can this be? That it makes no sense." I, I was completely freaked out. So. After a few days of sleepless nights and doing no other work, there's two conclusions I came to, two reasons why it appears to work, although it doesn't work. Because look, the chillers have been staging off, like they have been staging. Um, so here they are. The first one is this, is that when the bypass valve has been incorrectly set up to control system pressure, now there's a whole bunch of videos on this, so go have a look at them. I'll link them in the description. To explain more about the bypass valve. So when we have the bypass valve controlling system pressure, which in my mind is a waste of energy and not correct, what happens was, and, and many systems are incorrectly set up like this, as the AHU two port valve starts shutting off, the system pressure goes up, 
and the bypass valve opens immediately. The bypass is almost always open when it's set up like this. So what's happening then is, as soon as the two ports closed off, even though the water coming out of the coil was actually increasing, we started dumping a hold of six degrees Celsius through the main bypass valve into the return, and the chillers saw the return water temperature dropping, and we staged off. We staged off because the bypass was open, not because of what the valves are doing in the field. The second issue is when we don't have that wrong, and we actually have it the correct way around where the bypass valve is maintaining a minimum flow to the evaporator, almost all of the time that set point is incorrect. I always see it where the bypass valve is trying to maintain the design flow through the chiller, which is completely wrong. So what happens in that situation is, the two ports start to close off, the system pressure goes up, the pump slows down, that's correct, we're saving energy, pump slows down, pump slows down. But as soon as the pump slows down, obviously the flow through the chiller just drops slightly. Nowhere near the cutout, but just drops slightly. And we open the bypass valve too soon. The same thing happened. We dumped a whole lot of six degrees Celsius water into the return. The chiller saw the reducing return water temperature and staged off. So what we had there are two examples of when the bypass valve is incorrectly set up. The knock-on effect is that this, this thing appears to work. It doesn't work. When you do it properly, where the primary pumps are modulating to maintain system pressure and modulating down and down and saving energy and saving energy, and on those really low load condition days where the flow is dropping to the chiller, it's dropping, it's dropping, it's dropping. And then we open the bypass at the last minute just to hold the low flow, stop the chiller from tripping. In that situation, this return water temperature staging does not work. It cannot work. Because until the bypass valve actually opened, we had warm return water temperature coming back, not cold, warm. So what I think happens here is when you have a BMS engineer that sets the system up completely properly, so it's very energy efficient, that engineer with their level of experience has already transitioned into chiller capacity staging on kilowatts of refrigerant and not return water temperature. But that's only been happening for the last five years or so. So for a very long time, a very long time, like 15 years, maybe 20 years, because I'm 45 years old and I only once saw a three port system in a new construction job and that was probably a mistake. So generally, I'm 45. That, that was before my time when we, had, when we had three ports out there. So all that time, we have been staging chillers, in my opinion, incorrectly on return water temperature. It doesn't actually work. Thank you for watching. And please like and subscribe if you want to see videos similar to this. Have a think about that because that is pretty full on.